Welcome to another Sunday WAY ABC4 Community Forum, where we talk to community leaders and local success stories to discuss important information that impacts all of us here in Southern West Virginia. I'm your host, Brandi Lawrence. And today we're joined by another distinguished guest, John David, who is the director and volunteer of the Southern Appalachian Labor School, or SALS for short, is here with us this morning. Thank you so much for joining us here on the forum. It's an honor to be here, Brandi, and thank you very much for the opportunity. Yes, we're glad to have you. So, um, you know, for the people out there that may not be familiar, um, what does the Southern Appalachian Labor School do? Like, what's your history? Well, Brandy, we are a social and economic change organization. We've been uh, basically around for close to 50 years. Um, we started at West Virginia Institute of Technology in Montgomery. And um, at that time, a number of people came together um, and I'm really, really, really honored to say that a number of those folks, including some of my students at Tech, um, are still with us, though they have devoted their life to doing what we're doing, which is providing some uh, social and economic opportunities and change for the people of this area, which is um, mainly Fayette County, but also the Upper Canal Valley, Raleigh County, and adjacent counties as well. And what uh, basically we do is that we are interested in dealing with issues in the area that are very critical. Um, Fayette County, Clay, uh, Nicholas, a number of counties around us, McDowell, um, are what are termed as distressed counties by the Appalachian Regional Commission. And that's based on poverty and socioeconomic conditions. And so uh, what we do is we try to deal with those, uh, those issues in various ways. And what type of you know, resources do you offer? I do see that you all have book fairs every so often. I know I, I attend those, I'm a book lover. But uh, what other type of things that you know, people could benefit from? Well, our history and our current uh, presence is in workforce education and workforce training. We first really focused on dealing with people in the uh, labor movement and in uh, various kinds of employment situations impacted by their job situation. So worker education was our first priority initially, uh, and that involved uh, dealing with uh, things like the black lung movement and uh, dealing with people to understand contracts and what's going on in their workplace environment. As the jobs changed and as the situation changed, we branched out into doing other things. So we're still doing workforce training and education. Uh, for example, we have a current program where we're trying to take a real, real, real close look at coal miners and as they transition into other careers, not temporarily, but careers that could support families and be available to them for their future. Uh, and that has to do with the construction trades primarily. And what we have is a program to provide them with construction credentials, um, recognized uh, uh, credentials that uh, provide them with um, training even though you might say many of the miners probably know a lot about construction, but they might not have credentials. And many of them, because they went to work in the mines at a very early age, they might need some brush up on education or on their you know, different programs. So we have an arrangement with the West Virginia Adult Education Program to help in that regard so that they can either obtain a GED or get some particular training that might be appropriate for them. So we do workforce training and education in a major way, and we have current grants that are focused on that. The construction side of things, we got started, um, actually we got started doing repairs in Minden. Uh, this is about 30, 40 years ago when the Minden situation really uh, became critical and people were desperately needing repairs on their houses because they couldn't figure out how to move because of the contamination and also because the houses, as many 
Jenny Lynn, as we call them, coal camp houses are, are not adequately, you know, adequate for the current environment in terms of energy, in terms of uh, condition, uh, efficiency, and uh, all that. So we began repairing houses there, and we then continued to do other repairs, and repairing older homes uh, is fairly important for us right now. Uh, as we all know, the coal camps are dominated by old coal camp houses, single wall railroad wiring, as we call it, uh, and uh, they're not adequately insulated nor equipped for current living conditions. And um, our argument is to our funders that as people age in place and can't afford to go into assisted living or nursing home type locations because the cost is very high for that, that we want to try and make sure that they can live in a adequately, you know, uh, in an adequate place. So whether it's small repairs like fixing a, a wheelchair ramp or putting one in or fixing a porch or putting in grab bars or repairing a roof that is leaking or et cetera, et cetera, you know, we have been doing that and we have done probably close to over the decades, a thousand of them. And then um, if money is available, we'll actually uh, do more major repairs or actually construct a home for low-income people. We've constructed um, probably around 25 or 30 um, new homes for low-income people, um, some of them in uh, uh, Hilltop, uh, some of them in Page, some of them in Oak Hill, some of them in you know various places. Uh, we have some currently that we're working on in Beckley and in um, Oak Hill, and uh, we have houses in Boomer and Golly Bridge and all that. We also have got into um, working with the uh, Raleigh County Housing Authority in providing uh, opportunities for them to use HUD Section 8 vouchers. And HUD Section 8 vouchers are, you might say, uh, opportunities for people to have a subsidized opportunity to live and we have a major apartment complex that we renovated and operate in Golly Bridge and also the HUD vouchers are used on some other houses that we have around the area as uh, as well. We um, Sales is one of eight in the state HUD recognized housing counseling agencies and we have a certified housing counselor on the staff um, Marcus Wilkes who is from Beckley uh, initially but you know uh, and he is uh, providing housing counseling services to folks the fair housing uh, problems they have with um, uh, obtaining loans you know if they want to um, obtain a repair on their home or buy a home, uh, often they have to go through USDA or better uh, programs, et cetera. Um, we have a small grant that we have received for a few years uh, to repair homes that are um, occupied by veterans. And we, uh, we, we're, we're very pleased to be able to provide that you know, as, as well. The biggest other program that we have, Brandy, is um, what is called Youth Build. And Youth Build is where, mm, for since the late 1990s perhaps, um, we have probably put several hundred, if not more, uh, high school dropouts, those who are at promise, but are often called at risk um, students into a situation where they can complete their GEDs and ob obtain construction credentials. And so they are the ones that typically work on those houses um, that I've just talked about. Although we also bring volunteers to the area. And it's, it's, it's really amazing. I did a count in preparation for this, uh, this program uh, since we began 40-some years ago, bringing volunteers to the area. We're up to close to 20,000 volunteers that have come here. 
in the Upper Canal Valley in particular, uh, because we don't uh, pay a lot of attention to county lines, we look at need where people live, coal camps, etc. And um, this summer coming, 2023, uh, we'll be bringing about 400 volunteers. Um, some of them will be staying um, in the Upper Canal Valley. They're going to be staying at East Bank Middle School and working the, the valley. Uh, some are going to be staying at our dorm we have in Beards Fork and, um, and other places as, as well. We, we operate two former schools and take a great deal of pride that by taking over these schools, we didn't let them deteriorate and run down as has occurred in other places. Um, and um, one is the former elementary school here in Oak Hill, which is right downtown on several acres. Um, and the other is in Beards Fork, which was an elementary school too. In Beards Fork, the uh, other program that we have had for probably 20 some years is providing after school for children, kids, and summer uh, programs for school uh, for children. And we have vans that transport, uh, that go from Montgomery Smithers to Oak Hill and uh, bring the children to Bears Fork where we have a high tunnel and a walking track and a place for animals. And you know we have converted the place into being a facility for it, educational services. In Oak Hill, we house the VISTA office, the counseling office, as mentioned. And as you said initially, we also have a uh, used book uh, uh, facility. And uh, once a month, um, the uh, used books are provided at, you know, very, very low cost, 25 cents, 50 cents. And any Buddy in math can figure out that when you take in maybe a hundred and forty dollars, and you're selling people books for a quarter, we're really putting out a lot of books into the community. You know, which is uh, part of our goal that reading is fundamental for social change. And so we uh, we have um, numerous vistas, volunteers in service to America which is the Domestic Peace Corps program. Um, and this summer we'll be having close to, if not more than 20 summer VISTAs. Um, we have five or six or thereabouts VISTAs right now that are year around. And they organize and do things in the summertime. They can actually um, do what we call direct service legally. And the uh, program that we have there, Feed and Read, provides food and books to children in trailer camps and low-income apartments. That's wonderful. And, um, you know, all these things just going on, still the audience is, you know, wanting to know where can they reach you to, you know, access these resources? Uh, so Fair point. Um, well, the facility in Oak Hill, which is the, like I said, the former Oak Hill School. It is now an historic landmark and place called the Historic Oak Hill School. It is located at 140 School Street. And the phone number there is 304-465-4246. Um, the main office for the Southern Appalachian Labor School is halfway, you might say, between Oak Hill and Beards Fork. It's in Kincaid. And the main office number there in Kincaid is 304-250-7627. And people are there pretty much all the time. Um, in Beards Fork, the facility has a phone number, which is a 304 3047792280. Oh, and you have a website as well. And I have a website as well, which is www.sals.info. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. This was um, it for our first half. We will be back in our second half and talk more about the Southern Appalachian Labor School and what else it has to offer. A quick break.
break and I can re Welcome back to Community Forum. I'm here with John David, the director and a volunteer with Southern Appalachian Labor School. And we're talking about everything that the school has to offer. And, um, you know, we got a lot, you know, of your resources in the first half. Um, is there anything that, you know, we missed that we need to touch on that the people should know? Well, thank you, Brandy. I appreciate you uh, opening that up that way. And again, I want to uh, express my uh, appreciation to um, all the people I have around me that have worked so hard to uh, uh, be part of what we're doing. Um, they have devoted, you know, probably 20, 25 years of their life to, 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 to our work. I also want to thank, um, since um, it's appropriate right now, um, and Marcus Wilkes, our housing counselor, has an article in the uh, newspaper, uh, an op-ed piece. Again, we work with the Beckley Area Foundation in providing um, home repairs, particularly in the African-American uh, low-income community, and we want to express appreciation to the folks who support us uh, in, in that regard. The other um, program that we have is we have a program, uh, what is called the Mature Workers Program. It's for people who have a few years under their belt who have, you know, retired or want to come back or do part-time work, maybe 15, 20 hours a week with us. It's a federal program, and we have uh, several of them in, uh, at our various facilities in Beers Fork and Oak Hill. Um, the other thing that we do that's major is that we operate food pantries, and the food pantries are two in number, um, and we're serving about 120 or more families uh, a month. Um, in cooperation with the Mountaineer Food Bank. And the uh, pantries are located in Oak Hill, at the historic Oak Hill School, and also in um, Beards Fork. And, 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 and it's, it's really important because as people are trying to survive, not only with shelter, but also I think it's important that, you know, we do our best to provide nutrition and nutritional food as and, 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 and also, at the same time, we distribute health care products during COVID, you know, various kinds of face coverings and uh, other things were distributed. And we still have quite a few uh, that we're going to do this summer because the evidence seems to be that, you know, this crisis is abating a bit, but is still with us and maybe, you know, coming back and, you know, who knows what's basically uh, going on. Our big new thrust uh, will be trying to organize um, something like Franklin Roosevelt did in the 1930s when he organized the CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corps. We think there are a lot of retired people with skills around. A lot of people may be in service clubs. They may be in organizations like the AARP that could volunteer to come out and help their neighbors uh, repair houses. and. We're trying to organize a home repair core uh, of volunteers who would uh, take an interest in sprucing up their community, helping people live graciously and with dignity and, uh, and, and healthy and with energy efficient uh, uh, shelter situations. So our new thrust, our current thrust, will be to try to, to, to move in that direction with folks. Um, so that's one of the other things that I wanted to th throw into the um, uh, into the hopper. The final thing is that we maybe I don't know how many years ago, but we decided that we were going to uh, offer a low power uh, community radio station, and so we broadcast that from the historic Oak Hill School. The call letters are appropriately W A G E Wage, and we basically, it's a 106.5. It doesn't broadcast a, large, a long distance, maybe two, three miles. Uh, if we get an antenna situation worked out in an abandoned cell tower nearby, we can maybe go further. But it's an opportunity for, I think, um, us to just kind of provide advice and talk about issues and things that people might need in terms of um, 
understanding what is going on in the immediate area, just like you do with this program. We do our best. <laughs> and actually, I think we, uh, actually, any time that we can, it's, you know, within our viewing area, we report a lot about the food pantries, you know, just let the, get the word out and things like that. So I think it's really great, you know, you're starting up a program to further, you know, get these resources out to the people, because I feel that probably some of our viewers probably didn't even know about a lot of these things that were available to them. Well, the Youth Build program has spawned on Basically, we're calling the general focus adult build, that is, you know, trying to set up the core, as I mentioned, trying to retrain the coal miners who may have concerns that there may not be a long-term future in, uh, in what they have traditionally, you know, uh, done and, uh, and what their families have been part of. And so uh, we, uh, we hope that adult build will kind of complement youth build and we can move forward. But basically, trying to do and be a, a force for good, trying to do important things for the community and trying to empower people to feel that they are somebody, that they can you know, improve their lives, they can, they can rise up, they can, they can, they can uh, deal with conditions that have changed in their lives and, 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 and feel proud of who they are, where they are, and where they live. It's definitely a wonderful cause. And um, I know you were talking about, you know, volunteers and things that you have. If anyone, you know, that was watching today, if they were interested in volunteering, um, what are some things that they could do? Like, could they help build and construction with you, or is they it, could. Yeah. They could. They could say, hey, you know, I'm. I know how to repair a porch, or I know how to install grab bars, or I know, I've done this, you know. And, and maybe they could even supervise some of the volunteers who are coming. I mentioned that we have 400 coming this summer, but many of them are young high school students. They come here from across the United States. They have very, very good intentions. They probably need direction on what they do. And many of them, you know, can't and shouldn't operate power tools. And so having someone around who can be kind of, you know, a uh, supervisor uh, who knows a little bit can help them, you know, uh, it will be very, very, very useful to have those folks available. Definitely. And it's even, you know, kind of furthering your cause because that's even more like on the job training for, you know, these young volunteers. Precisely, yes. So uh, to volunteer, would they just need to get in touch with you through the contact number? Correct. Right, right, so, right. Yeah, and then we will try and figure things out. And also, um, maybe there's some people out there that are not as handy. Um, could they possibly, you know, donate? Or is there anything else that they could, like, do to help serve, you know, the cause? Good question, and I thank you for that one. Um, every year we successfully apply for what is called West Virginia Tax Credits. And that is a program that whereby if people donate to us, we can give half the value back in a tax credit that goes off their bottom line and what they pay the state of West Virginia in taxes. So we get donations ranging from plywood to lumber to used vehicles to this and that and this and that. And if, you know, my, you know appliances, you know, different things. So if people contact us and they have things that are, they're not using, that they perhaps feel could be used by somebody less fortunate or used for as building materials because they have in their uh, shed, you know, uh, a couple of uh, uh, piles of shingles uh, and that type of thing, then we can give them uh, an opportunity to donate. We are a 501c3 charitable organization by the state and also you know, if they qualify, we can give them tax credits. So when they pay their taxes on April 15th or whenever, uh, they can deduct it from the bottom line and pay less. That's wonderful. So, you know, they can help other people and help themselves as well. Correct. That's great. And um, let's see. Oh, uh, one more time, you know, for the people out there that want to get in touch with you as a volunteer or that want to take advantage of your resources, can you give them the phone number and your website again? Sure, absolutely. The main phone number is 304-250-7627. And that's an office we have in Kincaid, which is 
basically in an abandoned old gas station area that's along West Virginia 61. The website is www.sales.info. Sales is S-A-L-S. Info is I-N-F-O. All right, so they can um, contact you all for whatever they need, as a volunteer, as a donation, as uh, resources, uh, all those things. Well, the only other thing I might note is that there is an email site as well, and, 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 and that email address is sales at citynet.net, C-I-T-Y-N-E-T dot N-E-T, sales at citynet.net. Right. Well, thank you so much. This was really, you know, informative. I'm sure, you know, the audience found this informative as well. It's a lot I didn't know. But uh, thank you for joining us today, you know, telling us about this really important cause and everything that you all are doing for West Virginia. And uh, you guys feel free to actually don't feel free. you guys come back next week. We'll speak to another distinguished guest on our community forum. Have a great weekend. Thank you.